All right, today's session is about taping for the calf and the Achilles. Plus, we're also gonna go through some eccentric loading tips that I want you to do if you're doing rehab for an Achilles tendon or a calf tear to help you through that phase. So first of all is taping. Now, in the clinic, we use kinesio tape for taping for a calf's Achilles to try and keep the activation of the muscle and the tendon going when people are doing rehab. It's really supportive. It's also really good for, say, kids who've got severs problems and they've got, say, a real massive Achilles tendon component to their severs. So not just the severs taping for the bottom of the heel. If they've got some tendon weakness or pain, that's really helpful for that because it starts utilizing the calf muscle to support the tendon. But if you're one of those people who, say, you're an adult and you've got a calf tear, say, in your gastroc, you've got a recovering tendonitis, maybe you've even had an Achilles rupture and you're going through the rehab training to try and strengthen up the calf. Taping's a really effective, assistant way of doing it. Now, make sure, tip number one, if you've got, or if you've been massaging out that calf, or you've had that calf massage, or maybe you've had some uh, cream on that calf, so maybe some moisturizer, you need to wipe that off before you put the tape on, oh, it's just gonna fall off. So tape remover is really good. Basically just an alcohol spray that gets rid of any sort of creams on there and makes that skin drier so the tape will stick. Otherwise, if you're, say you're really hairy, if you're a guy, you might have to use some actual tape spray to keep that on there. But first things first, this is classic kinesio, so it's only stretchy one way. Now, what I would aim for is the lengthening is quite important. You're gonna go from the top of the calf to the bottom of the calf, that's your length. All right, so take that away, and that's how long that first one is. What I do, again, round the ends, because up here, and like if people are putting on tights or pants, you don't want the little corners poking out and then making that tape fall off, so just round that off. Now, for, this is a combination between Achilles and calf. Now, no matter what, if you're doing a calf one or you're doing an Achilles one, you're doing the same taping. There's just an extra bit for Achilles on top of that. But the space taping is the same. What I would do is you leave about, say, two strips here unsplit. Okay? So I would come through the middle of that tape and come all the way down the bulk of that tape, trying to keep it even so you've got two strips. You end up about there. So what's happening is Part of this is going on the heel, part of it's going on the Achilles, so you don't need to split. But when it goes past the bulk of that Achilles, then you split it up to go around the calf. So, with all these ones, take off the base first, like that. That's your anchor point, okay? That goes on under the heel, okay? So, that point there, at a zero degree tension. And just really push that down. Now, you'll notice that when I do this sort of stuff, I'm rubbing it quite a bit. That heats up the tape makes the glue stick a little bit better. So that's your anchor point. Now this is the tricky part. You're gonna hold both those together, and I've just noticed that I haven't rounded that one off. So if you look at that where I cut it, round that too, because otherwise you've got a little bit there. You're gonna pull on the first part that's not split to 100% stretch, okay? When you do that, push the, the person's foot in, at least in this case, into dorsiflexion, okay? So this is on a relative amount of stretch, all right? So think of Achilles on stretch, tape on stretch, all right? That goes up to about 100, okay? Or as much as you sort of can. So you can see that there. Then you just push that straight down and around that Achilles. So you're holding this tension on, get that down and stuck, and a little bit higher where the split is, just a little bit there, while you've got the tension on, while you've got the dorsiflexion on. So when you take all that tension off, it doesn't pull away, all right? And this is very crucial that you have this non-greasy, because otherwise it's just gonna rip off, and that's annoying. So that's your first part, all right? That's for your Achilles. Then this part here is utilizing that calf muscle to act as sort of like a activator to help support the Achilles. So I would then go, this is up to you, but depending on the injury, between 50 and 75%. Okay, so you may find you go, if you think 100's there, okay, you wanna go sort of 50 to 75, so there's a bit of tension, it's not much. Come up sort of around that Achilles, around the soleus, and then out where that edge of the gastroc is. Not completely on the edge, but in the outside part of it. And you'll notice like, you get to the point, oh, I've gone too far with that. Okay, you can either just stick that under 
here and go above the knee because to be honest, that's an anchor point and just up into there or you cut it off to make it a bit shorter, okay? It's up to you. So as long as you've got from here to there, at 50 to 75 percent stretch on there okay and again you notice i've still got that foot on dorsiflexion i've kept it on there okay the trick is to keep that calf on stretch and then go the other side same drill so get your tension right come out around the outside of that lateral gas shock this time into there push it down happy days and then while you're still got on stretch then get stuck in and really heat that up a bit, make sure it's all sticking down before you take that off, okay? Now that's just a generalized calf one, okay? Mostly for the Achilles. If you were doing, say, just a medial head, all right? So if this, this is sort of someone who's got a tear in their medial head and the rest of the calf is fine, nothing's tight, it's all about the medial side, then you'd go up I'll just overlay this just to show you. You wouldn't do two of these, but I'll just show you what I mean if you're just doing one side. Because this is quite helpful if you're just doing you know, an injury that's specific to one part of the calf. If it's a generalized calf strain, maybe a soleus strain, or it's right in the middle, then you'd probably go both sides. But if it was just on the medial side, like I said, you don't do two, this is just giving you an example, is you do the same sort of start point, right? 100% stretch there, okay? And then this one would go the same thing, but you'd follow the line quite close to that tear. So say the tear's in the middle here somewhere, right in the meat of it. The second one follows it initially around and then wraps around with the tension still on it. So the tension's all there, into there. And I would cross over the other one like that, so it sort of crosses there. So these two are sort of giving a contraction at this point here, does that make sense? So it's supporting that calf tissue. And that here, with this big anchor point down here, is really effective. Like a, the person gets over, it makes a massive difference to how they're feeling in there, the support of that muscle, and then they can train a little bit better. So that's how I do a medial side. Now, if you've got this sort of problem and it's Achilles, I would definitely overlay the Achilles with another strip. And it just needs to be straight at the middle. So straight at the middle where it meets the junction point. You don't have to go too long with this. You don't have to split it. And this one is to just give that Achilles a little bit more support. Especially if you're starting to get into calf raises, you know, and the load is starting to get on there, you want as much as you can. So this one, again, put them on stretch. Bring it up to Hundy, and then on there, get that full stretch there, and then you can back off a little bit, to maybe 75, straight up the guts into that attachment point, and then just really push all that down. You'll find that tape sticks better to tape, so when it goes second time, it's a little bit easier. It's just making sure that the tape on the skin really works. Now you'll find that one there is really effective in giving that support the Achilles, okay, like I said, I've done it on stretch, so it's almost pulling the ankle into that position, which is nice, um, and you'll find it really, really effective. So that's just sort of taping. Just bear in mind, sometimes these things can come off a little bit, depending on the person, depending on the Achilles. So you might need to put a little bit of strip of fixable here and here to keep it down initially. Um, and remember, the color of the tape doesn't make any difference. Black, pink, blue, doesn't make a difference. Some people say, oh, is there a difference between the tape? No. If you're using kinesio tape, it is one way. Rock tape's a little bit different, um, but that's kinesio is what I use. So that's your Achilles taping. Let's have a look at what we want to do with some eccentric loading work. So the initial strengthening phase for the Achilles or the calf we work on is eccentric loading. So if you're doing a calf race, so at least if you go up onto your toes for me, so if she goes up on two, okay, 50% load here, 50% load here, what we want to try and get her doing is working on the isometric component at the top. So if she, she can balance here on a pole up the top there, but she can't sort of hold onto it because we actually want the body weight load onto the Achilles. If she then takes her left foot up, she needs to then hold that there at a height, and there's the isometric part. I would work on about a four second isometric for that. Then she needs to slowly lower that heel to the floor and about a four second load as well. And that's your eccentric phase work because I don't want her going up and down on one 
just yet. She hasn't got enough strength for that. If she's injured, she needs to go up on two, so go again. So there's 50% load, and then it's 100% there, and 100% on the way down. She's just gotta make sure that she keeps her knees straight, so she's using all of her gastroc to help out the Achilles, not just the soleus. If the knee bends, you're working on the soleus, and that's a whole different set of strengthening work. We're just focusing on just getting some gastroc to Achilles eccentric loading work. So if you've got a gastroc tear or if you've got an Achilles tear, the straight knee one is the one to go for. So she'll be working on like three to four sets of like you know, 12 to 15 reps of that, you know, once or twice a day initially to get some loading work into that. But remember, go up again, that's almost like your rest phase because the training phase, take that foot up, is there and downwards. If you try and go up and down on one, there's no rest phase, all right? And if you go up and down on two, there's not enough load, all right? You're always shearing, or you're always taking the load on the good leg and you're never lo loading up the right leg. So we always go two up, one down. Now, that then progresses to a box, because at the moment, she's only working the tendon in that range, all right? She's going to dorsiflexion zero degrees. As she gets stronger, she can go down to below sort of um, dorsiflexion zero height. So if you go into a step for me, and this will increase the range of the tendon, right? If you do this initially, it's gonna to be too much because as she goes down here, that tendon's quite weak at that point. So the, the longer that tendon is, the sort of the rather weakness there is. So you gotta be careful that you don't do this straight away. This is sort of like a progression phase. So if you go up on two again, she goes all the way up, same as before, raises that, little bit of an ISO at the top there, and then loads down and then she gets to zero and then keeps going as far as you can go. Now the crucial point here is put that foot back on the box, support it, and then push up with two. So she doesn't have to load from the floor up on one. That's way down the track, doing single leg calf raises on a step by yourself is hard, and that's when the tendon is actually really good. You can't do that with an injured tendon or an injured calf. There's just not enough strength and you'll just make it sore, all right? So, up on two, down on one remains even when you're up on the box from a height. And it only needs to be this sort of high because you're just getting to enough sort of dorsiflexion range that is normal for daily life like stairs, hills, sport, that sort of thing. So that's my piece. See you next time.